Stella Maria Sarah Miles Franklin, a name that is synonymous with the very best of Australian literature and diverse narratives through the lens of those who have been recognised as a result of the posthumous establishment of her own literary prize, the Miles Franklin Literary Award. G'day, I'm Cassie McCullough from The Bookshelf on ABC Radio National and from ABC Radio Sydney. And I'm delighted to be your MC as we celebrate the Miles Franklin Literary Award, Australia's most prestigious literature prize in this very special virtual announcement. Now, my first point of order is to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and to culture. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and yet to come. And thank you also to Perpetual and the Copyright Agency's Cultural Fund for their strong support of the Miles Franklin Literary Award. And I'm also pleased to say that again this year, the ABC is a media partner to the award and another strong supporter of the Miles Franklin Literary Award. Now, please note, we have a hashtag for this event. It is hashtag MFLA2020. That's hashtag Miles Franklin Literary Award 2020. So please get amongst it, post, tweet, Insta, whatever floats your boat. We'd love to see you sharing the experience as we celebrate the winner of this very important literary award. Now, deciding the Miles Franklin shortlist takes dedication, time and energy. So I'd like to pay a special thanks to our panel of judges who were for this year's award, the State Librarian of New South Wales, Mitchell Librarian and Chair, Richard Neville, author and literary critic, Dr. Bernadette Brennan, author and book critic, Dr. Melinda Harvey, Sydney-based bookseller, Lindy Jones, and journalist and columnist for the Australian, Murray Waldron. The judging process for the Miles Franklin is a fairly long and complicated one. Boxes of books, this year there were 76 books, and between Christmas and really May, I suppose, we meet four times to uh, do an, in, an initial cull, then we meet for the long list, then we meet for the short list, and then we have a final meeting to choose the winner. So the key to the process is reading and rereading, because I think each time a book is reread, particularly in the context of books around it, then strengths and weaknesses really begin to shine through. It's actually very engaging and taxing, but also a very uh, exciting process. And I think we all get a lot out of being judges on the Miles Franklin. And now, to announce the winner of the 2020 Miles Franklin Literary Award, please welcome Perpetual's Managing Partner of Community and Social Investments, Katrina Fay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate the Miles Franklin Literary Award in what are very unique circumstances. I'm Katrina Fay. I'm delighted to be speaking to you today from Warringeri Lands in Melbourne's north. And I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of these lands and pay my respects to elders, especially any elders who might be with us for today's announcement. For more than 60 years, this award has supported authors and fostered uniquely Australian literature. When Miles Franklin made provisions for this award in her will, her aim was to support the advancement, improvement and betterment of Australian literature. The award is recognition of the importance of fostering a uniquely Australian narrative. It also acknowledges the hardships faced by many writers who are trying to make a living out of their craft. Miles hoped that by setting up this award, she would help to ease the financial burden of other authors and give them the gift of time to write. The Miles Franklin Literary Award is a great example of the impact one person can have through philanthropic giving. Since first being presented in 1957, over 1.24 million has been distributed to authors. Perpetual is proud to be the trustee of this ward and the steward of its philanthropic vision. Before we move on to the winner announcement, there are a few uh, thank yous that I would like to make uh, to our award partners. In addition to being trustee of the Miles Franklin Literary Award, and uh, managing the funds left in Miles's will, Perpetual is also a proud champion of the award. Copyright Agency and its cultural fund have been great supporters of the award since 2004. 
Thank you for your ongoing support of Australian literature and its creators. And the ABC, we're thrilled to have you back as our media partner again this year, and thank you for your continued coverage and support. The six novels shortlisted for the 2020 Miles Franklin Literary Award are John Hughes, No One, UWA Publishing. It was winter when I moved and very cold, but I'd sit on a camp chair on the concrete slab that supported the shed and chain smoke and drink from a goon of tawny port, trying and failing to come up with something I could do. I think that primarily the, the driving force for this book would be historical guilt. That sense of, of guilt that we feel for acts that precede us. I kind of wrote this book because I really was, I was looking for a form in which I might try to understand that guilt. Tara June Winch, The Yield, Penguin Random House. My daddy was Buddy Gone to Windy and he died a young man by the hands of a bygone disease. My mother was Augustine and she died an old woman by the grip of, well, it was an old world disease too. Yet nothing ever really dies. Instead, it all goes beneath. I wrote the book as a gift to my father and also to my child as well. I wanted to speak about the past, about our painful history, and I wanted to also write a hopeful book that was about reclamation and it was about pride in our continual cultural integrity and strength as a family. Peggy Frew, Islands, Alan and Unwin. Here on the beach, in the dunes, in the scrub, in the garden, on wet black settlement road at first light, under rows of cypresses and in spider webs and in waves and in the flights of birds, and in the silent... In writing Islands, I wanted to construct a portrait of a family, and a family which has um, suffered a significant crisis, that being the disappearance of a family member, a teenage child. I wanted to embrace all of the grey areas of relationships and the differences of perspective and experience that different members of the one family have when it comes to the same event. Tony Birch, The White Girl, University of Queensland Press. Sissy sighed with pleasure. I love this, Nana. It's the best part of the week. I'm happy you do, I did smile, because I love it too. The idea behind the white girls, I was very interested in the relationship between Aboriginal women and their children and grandchildren, and the history of the courage of Aboriginal women and older women in particular, to keep their families together, to keep their families intact, particularly when those families are under threat from separation or removal. So I wanted to create two characters, Odette Brown, who is the grandmother in the novel and her granddaughter Sissy to really produce a story, to produce a novel which showed the courage of an older woman on one hand and the love and tenderness between her and her granddaughter on the other. So while the novel is surrounded in a way by fairly potentially violent events, I wanted to write a book which showed the tenderness and love between the generations of Aboriginal people in the novel. Philip Salem, The Returns, Transit Lounge. Trevor rushes towards them, but they are gone. Above him, the possums are strangling their young, or well, that's what it sounds like, on and on. In each of the trees, as he goes downhill on the exit tracks, you can hear this terrible sound. The particular driving force for my book, The Returns, was to try to catch up with um, the processes that we uh, stall or, you know, that. Uh, go wrong in our earlier lives. The psychological encounter that my characters have is with themselves, essentially, but also, of course, with each other. And as the two main characters interact with each other, it gives them a kind of extra incentive to do more, so to speak, more work on themselves, but particularly because they desire to find out more about who they were and who they can be. And this sort of sets up a, a, a double dynamic, really, because they're both uh, finding each other in the process of finding themselves. Carrie Tiffany, Exploded View, Text Publishing. A car leaves 
a car comes back. Breakages are common under the blue sky. Only some of the broken things are ever fixed. The cicadas stitch their song into the day. I had wanted to write a novel about girlhood for some time and when I thought about my own girlhood uh, I realised it wasn't so much about following my interests or following my desires but it was sort of cobbling things together from what was left over or from the spaces and the gaps or things that I thought were acceptable and that would be expected of me. What drew me to the white girl was the plainness of the language and how without overly emoting, the reader could feel what was happening to Odette and to her granddaughter and the inequity of previous policies and how Tony Birch managed to convey that in such a gentle, but powerful way. One of the aspects that I loved the most about this book was the character of the grandmother. And she stayed with me and has stayed with me for months over multiple readings. What was compelling about Peggy Frew's Islands was the multiplicity of narratives and the different voices. You open the book and are immediately immersed in a poetic, lyric kind of narrative that destabilises you. You're not sure whose voice you're reading, where you're situated, what the story is telling you, where you are going. The thing we liked about this book was the complexity with which Fru draws people with failings and with longings. And we also appreciated the sensitive treatments of dementia and feelings of abandonment in this, in this novel. What excited me about The Yield was the use of the Wiradjuri language and how using one word and the definition described so much the power of a lost language that's being reclaimed and the beauty of the concept behind the language. That was really what stood out for me with The Yield. To have um, the grandfather, August, uh, August's grandfather, Poppy, um, speak in the Wiradjuri language and animate it and amplify its relevance in the way that Tara June Winch does is, I think, quite extraordinary. It's also a very bold move to put that in a novel. And the book makes such a huge contribution to imagining a post-reconciliation future for Australia. The power and the beauty of John Hughes' book, No One, was its elegant tone and its nostalgia without there being anything to be nostalgic about. The narrator, who is a very damaged soul. We love this novel because it's so gripping and suspenseful right from its first pages. And what he does is take us very cleverly through layers and layers of traumatic Australian history. We felt like the, this novel was thinking hard about what we remember and what we forget and actually questions whether or not there's really any possibility of forgetting. What I found unique about Philip Salom's The Returns was the joyfulness and the playfulness of the language. It was such a delight to read something that explored ordinary people without making them feel ordinary. The novel registers a certain yellowing of hope, typical of middle age, but also um, genuine hope nonetheless. Carrie Tiffany's Exploded View is an extraordinary book. I can't remember a book where an author has used a metaphor as powerfully and consistently as Tiffany has used The Exploded View. Uh, she writes about a topic that most of us, and I'll, I don't know, most pe people, and I'll include myself in that, might not want to write, read about, about child sexual abuse, but she does it in such a way that it's gripping and it will stay with you forever. When describing this year's winning novel, the judges said, the author sets up a complex dialect between white and indigenous knowledge, culture, language, and history. The novel explores the legacies of colonial violence, shame, intergenerational trauma 
and environmental destruction, and celebrates and amplifies the contemporary resurgence and relevance of the Wiradjuri language. And the winner of the 2020 Miles Franklin Literary Award is Tara June Winch for her novel, The Yield. Thank you so much. I want to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging of the land you are listening to these words. Respect, it's tucked into that phrase, but I wonder who really lives by it. Who says the word and feels it float into traditional skies, feels it float onto the surface of traditional waters, feels it at home, soaked through on traditional lands. One of the most respectable things we can do as humans is to say the words and mean them. But I don't see respect like this in the Australian vernacular. I see empty words that don't go past the teeth. Because now, this year, we as Australians let the mining companies blow up sacred sites. We as Australians let the First Nation children as young as 10 fill the prisons in the Northern Territory. We as Australians have not brought to justice one officer of the law in the deaths in custody of 430 something Indigenous men and women who have died in custody. We as Australians do not learn the true history of the so-called fair and lucky country we inhabit. We as Australians do not bother with the ancient and the rich and the deep unwavering cultural power of our Indigenous peoples. We as Australians are blind and silent and in the willingness to be both, we are cruel. There's a word, yinyamara. It is our word for respect. It means to be equal in respectful ways, to be flowing back and forth between two shores. It means kindness, gentleness, respect. I urge those who know that the old idea of respect that has failed Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people for 200 more years to learn our version, our yinyamara. Because our healing, our justice is bound with your learning, your healing too. I had a quote above my many desks that I sat at during the writing of this novel. It's by Gugiwa Tiongo, the Kenyan writer. He said that the bullet was the means of the physical subjugation and language was the means of the spiritual subjugation. This book explores that subtle violence, that continual violence by not incorporating language and truth into our curriculums and by not incorporating language and truth into the books being made by an industry to be visible and readily available. If Australia is truly at the crossroads of reckoning with itself, it is the duty of all of us to demand change for the sake of our past, our present and our possible future. I think ultimately this book is about memory about the trauma of remembering and forgetting. Because we are two things as humans. We are the dance of remembering and forgetting. That's all we do. And it is a daily trauma of dancing neatly entwined with those primordial urges. August's feels like you the same way Poppy Albert and the Reverend Greenleaf. They are trying to make sense of everything they have undergone. And that is the crux of our survival today and your liberation. What will you refuse to forget? What will you endeavour, however difficult it may be, to remember? Mandangu to the judges, the many working to make this award what it is today and all my yinyamara to the long-listed authors, 
and the shortlisted authors, especially Uncle Tony Birch. His novel, The White Girl, deserves this accolade too. And in my mind, we have shared this prize. Since 1957, it's the first time two Indigenous authors have been honoured on the shortlist. I am certain, I hope, it will not be the last time. My deepest gratitude to so many people who helped me, in particular, my mum and my dad, my husband, my child, all my family, my friends and colleagues, including Sue Abbey, who has launched a thousand ships, and to Uncle Dr. Stan Grant Senior for his life's work on the Rawadri Dictionary. Deepest gratitude to literary agent Melanie Ostell and everyone at Penguin Random House, including Meredith Cornell and Rachel Scully. Thank you for this honour. I hope to continue working. I hope to live up to this during my lifetime. Yeah, this is wonderful news and I, uh, I really want to congratulate Tara on producing such a, a fine and complex and intricate novel uh, as, a, as a, a work of Australian literature and in fact of world literature. Uh, I think this is an outstanding winner. Uh, I picked up uh, the Yield in manuscript maybe 18 months ago, I'd say, something like that. And uh, from my very first reading of the first uh, two or three pages, I, I went, wow, this is surely going to win the Miles Franklin Award. Uh, and, yeah, the, the quality of the work that Tara has um, produced here and the, the effort, you know, the sheer hard work and effort and effort of the imagination uh, that it, it's just all paid off for her and I'm really happy. Uh, yeah, very, very happy to see this kind of um, quality work rewarded in this way. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Tara June Winch on winning this year's Miles Franklin Literary Award. I love her book. Thank you also to Melissa and Katrina that brings us to the end of our official proceedings tonight, but can I take this final opportunity to thank our judging panel, Richard Neville, Dr Bernadette Brennan, Dr Melinda Harvey, Lindy Jones and Murray Waldron. And also our award sponsors, Perpetual, Copyright Agency and the ABC. Thank you for watching and don't forget to use that hashtag hash MFLA2020 and support these amazing authors and the Miles Franklin Literary Award. See you next year. Copyright Agency. Proud supporter of the Miles Franklin Literary Award. Standing up for creators for over 40 years. When I was on the letter W in the Oxford English Dictionary, Wire would be in that section. It means no. Wire wasn't there though, but I thought I'd make it there. Wheat was there, but when I skipped ahead, not our word for wheat, not Ura. So I thought I'd make my own list of words. We don't have a Z word in our alphabet, I reckon. So I thought I'd start backwards a nod to the backwards white fella world I grew up in. Start at Y, Yarrany. So that is the once upon a time for you. Say it, Yarrany. It, it is our word for spearwood tree. And from it, I once made a spear in order to kill a man. <laughs>